Conference USA Media Day rolls on, presented by Riot. We now turn our attention to Charlotte. They had a very difficult year, ended up playing only six games. Nine games were postponed and didn't play any games in November. And joining us right now is the head football coach at Charlotte in his third season, Will Healy. Will, I don't know how you did it, my friend. That had to be the most difficult time telling your players, sometimes less than 24 hours before they were to play, that a game was canceled. How tough was that for you? Well, I look forward to when you're announcing us as the uh, reigning conference champions instead of a disappointing season. Uh, <laughs> but it was, you know, it was a it was a crazy year, and uh, obviously with everything going on, I think our, our players did an unbelievable job of keeping things in perspective uh, with what was going on around the country. And uh, I could not have asked for more from them uh, on how they followed protocols and and they did everything we asked them to do and. You know, unfortunately for us, we had nine games canceled. We had 12 games that we prepared for that we did not play. And uh, a unique year, I, I think, um, is something you hope you don't have to deal with again. But I, I think I learned a lot about what I did right and what I did wrong and, and probably more of what I did wrong than anything. But, uh, you know, I, I'm proud of our guys. I hate it because you have this goal and this vision of what a student athlete experience should look like at Charlotte. And I wasn't able to make that come true, you know, with winning football games and unbelievable travel experiences and, and, you know, a really tight knit football team. It was a tough experience for them and uh, proud of how they've battled back and really excited about uh, what's on the horizon for this fall for our football team. Well, coach, I think we got to go back to two years ago when, when you took the job and you and I talked, you talked about the fact how you were going to preach culture and you have a hashtag peep now as a matter of fact I think the fact that you started to build that culture that helped these players deal with the situation they had to go through last season would you agree with that yeah and we had the right people in the locker room you know I mean a, a lot of credit to our assistant coaches who I, I you know stayed firm for what we believe in and stayed positive throughout the entire thing um and, and then we had the right guys in the locker room that just stuck with it and worked their rear end off. And, um, you know, incredible life lessons that we learned a year ago. Number one is football is not the most important thing. And number two is that, you know, regardless of what result, you know, you want, expect, feel like you deserve, if it doesn't go your way now, how do you respond? And uh, we had a, a locker room full of guys who responded the right way and uh, didn't show up on the scoreboard as much as I would like. Two and four is obviously not acceptable. Uh, but I, I, I was very proud of how they handled the entire situation and how they've responded since. Well, let's talk about the offense and about this season on, on a good note. You have uh, the leading returning passer in Conference USA and Chris Reynolds, and one thing I think he showed us last year, his consistency and his efficiency. What is the next step for him? I mean, amazing what he did um, last year in – you know, he tears his labrum on the first play of the 2020 season, which was kind of a microcosm for what happened. Um, but, you know, fought through it, played the entire year. Uh, you could tell he was hurt. You know, we were saving him as much as we could in practice to get him ready for the games. But he's a competitor. Um, you know, no matter what obstacles come his way, he's, uh, he's always come out on the other side. Uh, he was a former walk-on. You know, now he's a, a captain. I'm sure he'll be a captain again this year. But uh, he is the heartbeat of our football team. And um, proud of him for, for everything he did to, you know, to be the glue and keep us together a year ago. And uh, he's even added to his leadership ability this year. I, I think him being healthy is obviously, uh, you know, a major improvement from what it was a year ago. Uh, I think he's gotten, you know, he's gotten in the weight room. He's done a great job down there. His, his arm strength is really good. He's accurate. He knows our offense really well. Uh, and now we got to execute at a, at a high level and, and help him. I, I think we've got some more help around them, and uh, I look for him to have a big year. Well, one of the players that will help him, who helped him last year, was wide receiver Victor Tucker, second team All Conference USA last year. You call him the go to guy, and from what I've read, you're pretty excited to see where he can go this season. I, I'm more excited and impressed with how Vic has changed his ways and in a lot of ways, his life uh, over the last really 12 months. I mean, he is 
become a tremendous leader for our football team, and I, I think his work ethic has been unmatched. Um, you know, whether it was off-season conditioning, whether it's been spring ball, whether it's been what he's done this summer, I mean, he has really worked at a different level. And, uh, you know, you always hope that the productivity matches his work ethic, because if it does, he'll have a really special year. Um, he's extremely consistent. He's a great teammate. And uh, he's, he's been very, very impressive for us uh, throughout this entire offseason. He's got a lot of talent. He's got some of the best ball skills I've ever seen. He's got a tremendous amount of confidence, um, you know, works really hard at it. It's important to him, and, and uh, he'll have to have a big year for us. Well, in our remaining time, I have to touch on the defense. The mantra for the defense is never stop running. But that's also probably the case. You want to stop the other team from running this season. Was that a focus in spring? is improving rush defense? Well, I think all of it was, you know, was a focus for us. I, I don't know if we were, you know, played to the offense, defense, or special teams expectations that we have around here. So, uh, you know, I think it starts with rushing the passer. Obviously, having Marquise Watts is a, is a major weapon for us. Tyler Murray needs to have a really big year. Uh, we're going to put our corners in some one-on-one -on -one situations and feel better about those matchups. But uh, stopping the run is always important for what we do on the defensive side of the ball. But when you did take the job over, Coach, you talked about getting interactive with the fans. You allowed fans to come to practices. I think most coaches would not agree with that, but why do you do it? Well, I'm looking back to having, uh, I'm looking forward to having the most accessible football program in college football. And, I, you know, I, I do it for a couple of reasons. Number one is there's always another show in town, right? We're, we live in one of the largest cities in the country, and there's always something to do. It's a great part about this city. And I believe when those fans and those people who live in our city have a relationship with our football team and our staff, then they'll come out and support us. Uh, and then once they come support us, I believe they'll have a great experience here and see a really good product on the field. I think the other thing about it is our guys need to be able to interact with some of the most successful business people in the country. And it may create opportunities for them down the road. Uh, not only does it help from a fundraising and a season ticket sales perspective, but, you know, internships and jobs whenever these guys leave. So, you know, they're talking to billionaires and Fortune 500 company, you know, CEOs that are out at practice and in our games. And, uh, you know, they learn how to make a great first impression. They learn how to interact. They learn how to shake a hand, look somebody in the eye, and, and present themselves. And, and so, you know, whether somebody can pick a play or see what we're doing for the week or, you know, any of that stuff, that's not my concern. All you got to do is watch our film. You know what we're going to do. You know who we're going to be. But uh, I think the accessibility side, being this city's football program and, and developing those relationships is extremely important and it's important for our guys to continue to create opportunities for themselves well past the time that they're here. Well coach I've been around this business a long time you're doing things the right way my friend and I tip my hat to you and I thank you for spending some time with us let's play a whole season this year okay and I wish you the very best of luck. Let's do it thanks so much for your time look forward to when this thing's back in person. Taking a look at Charlotte's schedule for the 2021 season, they open up with Duke on September the 3rd. Tough non-conference schedule. Not only do they have to play Duke, but they also have to play at Illinois. That'll be on October the 2nd. Joining us now, the redshirt senior quarterback, Chris Reynolds. Chris Reynolds, the former walk-on, had an incredible year last season. Conference USA honorable mention. Big things are expected of him this season, and he joins us right now. Chris, good to have you part of the show. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Okay, your, your season started out with a bang. You get hurt on the first play, but you kept playing. What did that tell you about yourself on just how tough you are? Mm, I think it's just uh, I've been like that my whole life. Um, I don't like letting people down. And um, I had a job, a hand, a job on hand, and I wanted to go through with it and give everything I had. I feel like I'd go there and finish out the plan, the game, and playing the season. And I wanted to be there for my teammates. Well, you have started every game you have played in. And talking to coaches the last year, they said you really stabilized the offense. Has that been a maturation point for you, just to mature to become that stabilizing force in the offense? Um, I think it's a matter of taking ownership of, uh, of what you believe in and what you're trying to do as an offense and as a unit. Um, 
I'm just a guy who tries to get the ball rolling and everybody else makes the plays. I try to feed the ball to the playmakers. I mean, you got guys like Victor Tucker in the past, like Benny LeMay, Aaron McAllister, Cameron Dollar. Um, they're the playmakers. It's just my job to get them the ball, and I take pride in that and understanding what I need to do to do that. Now, when we were running some of the highlights, we see that you throw at a bunch of different angles. You played shortstop in high school. Do you think that helps you being a quarterback? Absolutely. Uh, like you said, I was a shortstop, played baseball since I was in second grade, um, did the whole travel baseball, showcase baseball through high school. Um, as a shortstop, you had to throw from different angles if you turn into um, back in the hole. Um, that's really helped me now. I can maneuver my way around defenders with my arm angles. Um, and I think if I didn't play baseball, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, you grew up with four siblings, boys and girls. Were you the toughest? <laughs> <laughs> Oof, I don't know. My on, older sister's honest. pretty tough. They're all tough. My older sister, she played college soccer at uh, ECU. She's gone through four ACL surgeries and continued to play through it. After all those surgeries, she's pretty dang tough. My little brother's got that competitive edge to him. He's playing with me now. My older brother's going to be tough too. And they're all tough. They're all tough. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, your sister goes through ACL. You just have an arm problem. I go with your sister being the toughest. Sorry. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm with you. I agree. Go she, with that. She wins that battle. Okay, explain Club Lit to us. <sighs> Club Lit is a party, <laughs> uh, in-house party after a big win. And sometimes shirts do come off, if you haven't noticed. Um, we get the disco lights going, we get the music going, and we enjoy um, a long week of work to earn the right to win and then we earn the right to enjoy it. Then we have the 24-hour rule, and then we're moving on to the next week. How good is it to play for a coach that allows you to do that and also enjoys watching you do that? It's pretty cool. You know, you turn around, make a big play. You think you're pretty fired up, and you see a guy streaking 50 yards down the field on the sideline. That's pretty neat to see. Um, you, you, it's cool to see a coach that appreciates the work that his players put in. Um, and he says, listen, you guys work so hard for this. I want you guys to enjoy it. I want you guys to work hard and then also win hard. And it's cool to have somebody like that on your by your side. Well, Chris, I, I appreciate you spending time and set some records last season. Looking forward to setting some more records this year. But I think all of us just want to see you play a full schedule of games and go to a bowl. Chris, I wish you the best of luck for this next season. Thank you. I really appreciate that. We're going to turn our attention to defense now. And joining us is Marquise Watts, the defensive end, Conference USA honorable mention last season. Marquise, good to have you on the show, my friend. It's an honor to be here, sir. Thank you. Well, you're in some pretty elite company because Alex Highsmith, who obviously plays for the Steelers now, Larry Ogunjobi, also in the NFL, you joined that group as the only 49ers to have double-digit sacks. Do you have to pinch yourself when you see your name next to those two? Yes, it's always an honor, first and foremost. It's an honor to, to have my name with those two, um, those guys and that group of guys. Um, it puts a chip on my shoulder, honestly. You know, you went to a bowl game in 2019. Everybody was excited. And then last season, you were only able to play six games. And you and I were talking before we went on how tough it was to have Coach Healy come up to you 24 hours before and say, hey, we're not playing. How do you think the coach handled it, and how tough was that for you personally? Um, as toughness of it, the hardship of it was us working so hard and having hope in our hearts that we could play on Saturday. Um, us working from Monday to Saturday morning, getting ready for the game and getting bad news that we aren't playing. And um, we all seen it coming at certain times right before the moments we found out or when we were told because, like, Coach Hill would come in and, like, he would be honest with us and his emotions – was on his sleeve. You could see that he was hurting just as much as we were, and he hated it to deliver the bad news that he had to, but it was a crushing season. Uh, it wasn't good. I'm just excited to get back at it this year. Well, you know, you talk to people about how tough you are, and they say you are as tough as a rock, which is no surprise. You're a geology major. Okay, why geology? I, I mean, I've seen some pretty good majors, but I've never seen a football player that's a geology major. Um... Ever since a kid, you know, 
just things about the planet, earth, um, trees, dirt, rocks. It's just that type of nature has always interests me. Um, it's just been something that I've always had love for and just chased to follow it in college. Uh, one of the mantras for the defense this year is never stop running. And, and I think part of the thing that the defense has to do this year is stop the run. Is that something you've watched a lot of tape about and, and talked about with your teammates? Yeah, we talk about it a lot. Um, a lot of things we have to fix um, is communication. Communication is key. Um, that's what we're, our main point of focus right now is key. Um, communicate, run to the ball, and don't finish until you hear a whistle. Have you taken on more of a leadership role with this team, do you think, this season? Yes, um, especially with defensive line. Um, I'm far from perfect, but I continue to strive every day to be a better leader. And since I'm an older guy now, there's no excuse. Um, I'm, the only regret I have right now is that I wish that I started to lead earlier. Well, you're very devoted to the team, but you're also devoted to your family. You have another, a younger brother, Larique, and a sister, Samaya. Your devotion to them goes well and beyond. And, and tell, tell us about that, why you are so devoted to those two. Um, honestly, I was just one day, I was in the car listening to Luke Combs, and um, one of the songs, he was talking about how good of, he, how good of a brother he is. And I'm a, I'm a really conscious guy, and I thought it to myself. I'm like, I haven't been a good brother. Um, I have been using football as an excuse um, not to be at home as much. And, my communication has been weak, and these last few months, I've been nothing but communicating with my family. Um, I've been spending time with them and just showing them that I love them, and a lot of things that I do are for them. Well, that is very noble, and keep that up, my friend. Marquise, thanks for being with us. We wish you the very best Thank next you. year. And coming up on Conference USA Media Day, we'll focus our attention on Western Kentucky.